Dear Gabby Hannah. I'm not gonna sit down and make a video with screenshots exposing my The craziest Gabby has crossed the line completely. Gabby Hanna's career started in Vine, where she reached around 5 million followers before the app shut down. Gabby's Vine videos consisted of funny micro-sketches where she would play different characters, and they were very well received. People loved her. In 2014, Gabby also started her YouTube channel, The Gabby Show, where she did collaborations and challenges with other formal Viners, as well as storytime videos. Eventually, Gabby completely migrated to YouTube as her main platform for creating content, and she used it to begin her career as a singer and a poet. Gabby's content has always had a fair share of drama, but from 2018, her channel stats started a downfall that hasn't stopped. Some of the hate that Gabby gets come from minor incidences in the past, like when she misled her viewers into buying low-quality products. People also hate on her by saying that she's a mediocre singer and poet. In fact, many people have used fragments of her songs, poetry books, and podcasts to make TikTok videos making fun of her. But that's not the end of it, and there are very serious complaints about her. Internet celebrities like Rice Gum, Jesse Smiles, and Trisha Paytas have claimed that Gabby is actually a pathological liar and a manipulator that needs to be stopped. The whole internet appears to believe that Gabby is most of the time involved in some sort of drama because she loves it, and it gives her more views. But how did Gabby Hanna go from one of Vine's greatest stars to the most hated YouTuber? Is she the victim she claims to be, or as manipulative as other people say? One of the first major controversies in The Gabby Show was when Gabby encouraged her viewers to buy makeup brushes from the brand Kenza Cosmetics, which was giving them away for free and only asked people to pay for the shipping. Apparently, the brushes took longer than expected to arrive to the buyers, and when they finally got them, they found out that they were very low quality. Gabby faced an enormous backlash after this and was criticized for partnering up with Kenza only to get money. Gabby made a video addressing the situation, but her attitude was not very convincing for the unsatisfied customers. People said that Gabby appeared to not want to be held responsible for promoting a misleading product, and according to Gabby's haters, this is something that she always does, finding ways to blame other people for whatever conflict she is involved in. In her video, Gabby says that she didn't lie about anything and that the viewers should have managed their expectations. Gabby started creating music in 2017 with mixed reviews, and in 2018, one of her songs made her become a meme. It started during an interview with Genius, where Gabby was promoting her single, Monster. The YouTuber started singing her song and explaining the lyrics, but during the chorus part, her voice becomes really loud. So what if I'm the monster that's been here all along? After the interview was released, people on the internet started making memes about it and took that part of the chorus and mixed it with other funny viral videos of loud noises. What if I'm the mon Gabby made a video reacting to the memes where she tried to laugh it off. In that video, she jokingly says that she's happy she finally fulfilled her dream of turning into a meme. Then she goes on to say that to her, it wasn't much of a big deal. But she also claims that if she had edited the videos herself, she would have done it in a different way. She also claimed that screaming during that part of the chorus was an artistic choice and that it's a matter of preference. And also, I saw some comments saying I could have sang it in my head voice, I could have sang it falsetto, and yeah, I could have. But if I would have done that instead, then all of the comments would say, when I heard that song, I knew she couldn't belt that note like that, that's all producing and auto-tune and vocal effects. So with the internet, you can't win. So I sang it the way that it was written, because that's the way I like to hear it. After this, people criticized her for not being able to take a joke. Gabby also combined her singing with writing, and she used YouTube to promote her poetry book, Adult Lessons. The book, however, got a lot of negative reviews and many reaction videos on the YouTube community criticizing it or making fun of it. Gabby then made a video response that has since been deleted in which she says that art is subjective and she's not annoyed when people don't like her stuff because it's a matter of preference. She also goes on to say that other artists like Quentin Tarantino have also been misunderstood and that she wanted to make some simple poetry like William Carlos Williams is this is just to say there are people who make videos and articles tearing apart Quentin Tarantino saying he's a terrible director he's still one of the most famous and respected filmmakers of all time viewers thought that these claims are kind of cocky of her and they said again that Gabby's unable to take criticism another of the complaints about her poetry book is that for some people it felt lazy as if it had only been a way to make money out of her audience and in one of the poems of adult lessons she says that she hopes 
more people buy her book because she wants a Lamborghini. This is not the first time that Gabby has joked around about doing stuff only for money. In November 2019, influencer Tana Monjo tweeted, Should I just have a scandal soon? I'm bored. And Gabby replied, Can it be with me? My views are down. Perhaps the most well-known controversy in which Gabby has been involved in is her fight with her former friend Jesse Smiles. It all started back in 2014 when Jesse filed a lawsuit against Curtis Lepore for sting her. Apparently, Gabby kept on hanging out with Curtis's friends and later on, according to Jesse, she said that Curtis's friends hadn't her, which she doesn't remember saying, and that she didn't have a reason not to hang out with them. Six years later, in 2019, Gabby answered a tweet that said, I think a lot of people forget or don't know that Gabby Hanna chose a over her then best friend, who was the victim. And she didn't just do it privately, but publicly. Gabby then DM'd the person who tweeted that, and among many things, she said that it was actually Jesse who started a hate campaign against her. Gabby then shared with that person some videos and emails that she had exchanged with Jesse, as well as some of Jesse's personal information that she didn't agree to share. Jesse then made a video addressing the situation, looking really hurt that Gabby had made her look like a liar in a situation as difficult as hers. Jesse said that Gabby was a liar and that she had no compassion or empathy. I don't even know how to express what I felt when I saw this message. This was the most, one of the most disgusting parts of all these messages to me. Number one, you lied. He didn't call you. You hung out with Curtis's friends. Curtis was there. This is what you told me. He pulled you to the side and he told you that. He told you, I'm so sorry I was mean to you. I can't believe what Jesse did to you. Trying to get on your side. That, that part's true, but it happened in person. And the reason why I remember it happened in person is because you told me. I'm getting like really worked up and really, annoyed. I'm sorry. Gabby told me when I, communicated to her. This was after we had stopped being friends. But even though we had stopped being friends, one of the things that I believe you never do, even if you hate someone now, is hang out with their and his friends. So I was hurt and I told Gabby, Gabby, this is like I'm really hurt. And she defended herself when all of this happened and she said, I was hanging out with his friends. I wasn't hanging out with him. He just so happened to be there and he pulled me to the side. I didn't intend to talk to him, whatever. And I communicated with her and told her how much that hurt me. And that was the point where she told me something like I will literally never because I cannot believe like till this day that she would say something like this she said Jesse Curtis's friends didn't work what the f do I say to that like I don't know Gabby is also involved in a public fight with Trisha Paytas. It apparently started when Gabby told Trisha's then-boyfriend Jason Nash that Trisha had herpes. Since then, Trisha had said that she would get her lawyers involved because Gabby is lying in almost everything she said. Trisha also claims that she's actually scared of Gabby and that she believes that she's an actual psychopath. This girl is a, like a psycho, like an actual psychopath. Oh my gosh. Given all of her past controversies, Gabby's view counts have been consistently falling. In addition to that, her music video special didn't receive the amount of views that Gabby was expecting, which was suspicious to her. In a series of tweets that have since been deleted, Gabby said that YouTube has shadow banned her, preventing users from accessing her content. Gabby even added a screenshot where she showed that if her name was written in incognito mode, reaction and commentary channels criticizing her came up before her own content. Gabby then claimed that her fans were automatically unsubscribed from her channel. The YouTube YouTuber eventually said that she's already talked about it with YouTube and apparently the issue has been solved, but it was never clear whether there was something actually wrong with Gabby's channel or she was just not receiving the attention she wanted. So is Gabby the victim? Whether it's with her comedy, story time videos, books, songs, or drama, Gabby clearly knows how to keep her name out there. Unfortunately for her, her views continue to drop and the things that most people say about her are constant, that she's a liar and that everything she does, she does for attention. Gabby has expressed many times how cancellation culture has affected her well-being. However, she's also proved that she's willing to always defend herself and her art against criticism. Do you think the internet is being unfair to Gabby? Let us know what you think in the comments.